Good morning. Don't we serve a mighty God? Don't we serve a mighty God? Do we serve a mighty God? Hallelujah. How's the connection? Good morning. Good morning. Listen, I'm having challenges going to sleep after we pray in the evenings. You know, it's 7 p.m. for some of you, but it's about, you know, 11 p.m. midnight for me. So, you know, imagine we do the uh, 11 p.m. prayer, then, you know, the midnight, you know, the, uh, you know, the 1230 for me. I mean, listen, prayer is working. Okay, I'm seeing the evidence of it myself. Don't nobody need to tell me. Nobody needs to give me a lesson or a lecture on praying. Do you understand? Because, because I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it working. I'm seeing prayer working. So I don't need nobody to give me a lecture on it. Because I see the evidence of it. Oh, God is good. How many, how many of you, listen, not trying to hype nobody up. Just a simple yes or a no. How many of you can say without a shadow of a doubt that prayer has been working for you? I know it's been working for me. Oh, I know. I know it's been working for me. In Jesus' name. Listen, and as we're praying, you know, those in, you know, I think it's in Houston, Texas, all these hurricanes and this flooding, okay, it, 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 it brings a lot of things into perspective. Okay, a lot of this stuff that we see, it brings a lot of things into perspective. All this flooding and all this chaos and all of this mess and all of these things that happen. You know, people's material stuff just getting damaged. Houses, you know, uh, cars just being washed away. And if you notice that it is during this time where you see that people don't really care so much for those things now, they're much more interested in their lives being preserved. You know what I'm saying? They are much more happy. They're more concerned that their lives have been preserved. And that's what I keep saying to you. You see, we, we don't have to wait for these kind of situations to come up before Christ ambassador. Before we know what is valuable. The enemy has placed value on everything else. You know, diamonds, gold, silver, whatever you want to call it. Everybody has a value system of some sort. See, Lord Jesus, I love you. But you know, that young man, David, he caught the revelation, what is man that you are so mindful of him? What is man that you are so mindful of him? And the son of man that you visit him, what is man? What is man? He, caught the, he didn't say, go, 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 what are these material things? Material things, you know, listen to me, they're good, yes. It's good to have so that you be comfortable. Nothing wrong in having. Nothing wrong in being a millionaire. Nothing wrong in having 10 cars or a big mansion. Nothing wrong with that. But the thing is, we should never allow those things to make us value our relationship with God. Okay? Based up upon what we have or what we don't have. This is Cheryl. Listen, if we begin to think the success... Okay, if we begin to qualify success based up upon what somebody has following them on social media, what somebody has on Facebook Live, you know, a big conference that somebody has done, you know, the number of people that came to a conference. Let me tell you something. If we begin to equate success with that, then we've missed it. Because then we would disqualify a whole bunch of people in the Bible. Am I making sense to you this morning? If we begin to look at those things and feel as though that, you know what, because the room was packed and every seat, there was only standing, there was standing room only. It, listen, if, 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 if that is what we use to qualify and say, hey, that was a success, that means God was there, we've missed it. Because let me tell you something, when you're really telling the truth in the world that we live in today, the Bible says he came unto his own and his own received him not. Now, that was the people that were supposed to be re receptive of him. How much more those who ain't even saved, Dr. Donna? Do you understand? You know, when he started telling the truth, guess what? Everybody started leaving him. 
when he really started preaching the truth, when he really started telling them what is the prerequisite, what is the requirement to be a child of God, they left him. And that's why you heard me play that song. You know, I said, Yeni baby nayaba. Jesus asked. Jesus asked them, Are you also going to leave me? Because I'm used to this abandoning thing. You know, people like to abandon me. People like to leave me because I tell the truth. There is something from the beginning of time. From the beginning, it has been the enemy's exclusive assignment to make sure that you are, the first Adam was bound. You understand? The first Adam was bound. See, Satan is bound, so Satan was everybody to be bound. He wants to look in the mirror, and when he looks in the mirror, he doesn't see himself. He sees you. When he looks in the mirror, he sees that Albert is bound. Sister Mary is bound. Dr. Donna is bound. Dr. Dana is bound. Sister Cheryl is bound. That makes the enemy come. You know, you know, you know there's some people, Sister Renee, you, you know there's some people who it's not so much that they want you know, evil for you. It's just that they want you to be in the same boat as them. It makes them feel good about themselves. How many, of you ever, how many of you have ever experienced that you have friends, okay, who, it's not that they're thinking evil of you, they just want all of you not to have jobs. As long as they're not working and you are not working, they're good. Because, you know, you cannot sit down and have a pity party. You know what I'm saying? You cannot sit down and have a pity party because we're all in the same boat. The day that you make up in your mind that you're going to step out of that boat, Mr. Disciple, Sister Disciple, the day that you decide that this boat is getting a little bit heavy, I'm beginning to become uncomfortable in this boat. I don't want to be in this boat any longer. I desire to come out of this boat. The day that you decide to step out, my God, that's when you will find out what their true feelings towards you are. See, now it is okay because we're all struggling to eat. Now it's okay because we're all struggling to pay our bills. Now it's okay because we all don't see the now and we don't see the future. So it's okay. But the day that you catch a revelation that you're supposed to be in a better place, you are supposed to be in a place called victory. You are supposed to be in a place called success. You're supposed to be in a place where he is calling you to come up higher. That is when they're trying to go to sleep. Sister Samuel, brother Samuel, go to sleep. He ain't talking to you. What makes you think that he will call on you? What makes you think that he'll come and waste his breath talking to you? Do, ha, ha, have you looked at your surroundings lately? Have you looked at your bank balance lately? Have you looked at your circumstances lately? My God. And, 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 you know the answer that you should give to them? You have to tell them that, you know what? That is why I qualify. Because when you looked at my bank account, I had zero. When you looked at my qualifications, I had zero. When you looked at my house, I had zero. I have given him a platform for him to work on because later on, even if I decide to go and boast, even my unbelieving friends will say, Brother Albert is lying. We knew him when he had nothing. It can only be God who's done it for him. My God, do you know why you qualify for God to use in this season? You've given him a platform of zero, of nothingness. See, that's what he did in the beginning. There was nothing. He created everything out of nothing. See, that is the God that we serve. When he looks at you, he says, uh-uh, you've not given me something to work with. Can the clay tell the potter what to make? Uh-uh. It is the potter who, desi who, who, who designs, and then whatever he wants to do, he commands it to be. That's the God that we serve. Didn't you know that? Didn't you know that's the God we serve? Sister Stacy, didn't you know that? Didn't you know that, that that's why sometimes he wants to read? Because you see, some of us, you know, we have big mouths. Some of you, you don't need to say amen to that. You don't need to say amen. You know who you are. You know, you like to talk. You like to boast. So guess what he's going to do? Like the woman with the issue of the blood. He is going to reduce you into a state of life. 
and death. See, you're going to be between life and death. See, the woman used to have money. And then everybody else abused her and took away her money. And now she was flipping between death and life. See, and in the midst of flipping between death and life, she now understood that she needed to connect to the person who gives life because the life giver is the only one who can take away your death situation. See, now you come to Jesus when you ain't got no money. See, when you had money, you would never have come to Jesus. When you had money and they told you by Jesus, my friend, leave me alone. Who is this Jesus? I don't need to know no Jesus. I'm okay. So God said, okay, since you are okay, since you believe that your money makes you okay, I'm going to strip every penny that you have off you. All I'm going to do is, you see, the millions that you have, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to take the zeros off. I'm going to go to the front and I'm going to take off that big number. Once I take off that big number, all you have is a bunch of zeros. The zeros don't mean nothing without the big number in front of it. So guess what? Now I reduce you so that you can catch the revelation of who I am. You know the God that we serve, he called people who were millionaires and, you know, people who had, you know, uh, uh, you know, they had farms and everything. He said, leave everything, come follow me. He said, Abraham, leave your father's house. I know there's money in your father's house, but I don't care so much about that. Because what I'm going to give you has not been contaminated. What I'm going to give you, nobody else can give you. I want everybody to know that I am the God of everything. I told one lady today, she messaged me, she said, you know, she said, and I, and, and I know it's God because I keep saying it. You know, she said she's going through some storms in the season. I said, woman of God, stop focusing on the storms. Look at the one who made the storm. Let your eyes and your focus be on him. Because that's all you need. I keep saying to you, listen to me, when hurricanes and when these storms come, that is when you need to recalibrate your life. That is when you need to bring, because, you know, you can have a mansion. But what is the use of a mansion when it's flooded? Oh, that's you. That was you, man of God. What is the use of having a mansion if it's now flooded? All the material stuff that you have in there are now messed up. SUVs. Expensive trucks stuck in the middle of nowhere with water all up in the car written up messed up but you know what but you know what you ain't trying to save those things you know what you're trying to save you're trying to save your life because it is in these circumstances that you realize that you know what these things can be replaced see when my god i just caught the revelation see when the car when the house when it gets flooded or when it gets messed up there's no funeral service for those things Nobody holds a funeral service for those material stuff. Because guess what? They can be replaced. You know what cannot be replaced? Your life, my life. That is why, under the sound of my voice, I want you to know that you are the most valuable, if I can use this word, commodity. Trust me, you are so valuable, there is no price that can be put on you. Are you, are you hearing me? There is no price that can be put on you. Nobody can put a figure on you. If they put a figure on you, they're lying. My God, if they reduce you to a certain level, they're lying because there is no amount of money that can buy you. Halalabasia, Veliboshaya, Ziki Valaba, Balaba Sutilibria, La Prasu Kabandilibriasa. Everybody open up your mouth. You know these tongues, it don't come by eating and you know watching people on social media. He needs to give it to you. You know, I was in the university and I told them, I said, listen to me, the more you talk about him, the more he will show up. I was in the place and you know, I was just laying hands on people. I wasn't saying nothing because I said, you know what? He's here. I'm just connecting with you. Whatever you need to receive, he'll give it to you. In the name of Jesus. And this morning, I come to let you know, the more we talk about him, the more he makes himself visible. Because he said, if I've been lifted up, if you talk about me, if you let people know how real I am, you don't need to do anything. I will show up. I will let people have the evidence of what is being said to them. You know, one thing that I love when I was doing my, you know, when I was studying, you know, whenever you do the theory, 
there's got to be a practical there's got to be a practical side one thing i recognized when i left ghana and i went to you know uh, the uk to study okay when i was in school because of a lack of development or, or, or you know or whatever in africa we're very good with the you know with the theory side okay you go to the schools you learn everything you know write it on paper you know just learn everything you'll be learning about the computer and you will never have a personal encounter with a desktop am i making sense to you so you know everything about the desktop but you never get the opportunity to work on one because the schools don't have it. The schools can afford it. My God. Sister Veronica, I'm talking good. See, so what is now? The, 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 the practical side is what gives you what is now the opportunity to practice what you've heard. And so the more we talk about him, that's just the theory. That's just us giving you the word. God is this. Jesus, you know, we just talk about God. We just talk about how much we love him. The more we talk about him, what is now, the practical side is when he begins to literally walk into the room. You know, like you feel his presence coming into the room because when he steps into the room, he removes and he takes away all the burdens. He breaks all the yokes. He removes everything. Things that can be seen and things that cannot be seen he does it all he does everything my god he does everything you know why because that is the power that he possesses in the mighty name of jesus lift your hands in the name of jesus lift your hands lift your hands in the name of Jesus, Father God, this morning, your name has been lifted up. Your name has been exalted. There is still power in your name. There is still authority in your name. We don't live based off upon what we see. We live based upon, off upon what you have told us. This morning, Father, I present prayer mantle family to you. Work a miracle in our lives. Work a miracle in our lives. In the name of Jesus. To the one who died and rose again. On the third day according to the scriptures. We love you God. We need you God. We desire your presence above everything else i commit prayer mantle to you this morning i commit every prayer request to you this morning father anybody who's in distress we release the holy ghost to locate them we release the holy ghost to find them we release the holy ghost to be their portion in the mighty name of jesus father let not the enemy prevail over them Lord God, I bless your name. Lord God, I magnify you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, everybody, lift up your hands wherever you find yourself. Father God, we are connected to you. We are convinced by your power. We trust your name. We bless your name. We acknowledge your importance in our lives. Ha! Baba su calabrasi, viki libra si to libra sia. Hey, malalaba si to ash. In Jesus' mighty name, Hallelujah. Feel like the line is frozen. You know it's messed up. Okay, but God bless you. We hear the power. You know the power surge. There was a power surge. God richly bless you. God keep you in Jesus' mighty name. You are blessed and highly favored. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Have a blessed day. Ha, yes, Lord. Have a blessed day. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Bye-bye. Learn to follow simple instructions. When it's prayer time, do not type. Okay? Do not type. When it is praying, do not type. Be the recipient of what the Lord is doing. Do not type. Okay? Do not type. Do not type.
Do not type. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Valavasia. The Lord, you know, speaks to you. The Lord wants you to support this ministry. Let us know, okay? God bless you. I love you. I'm praying for you. Thank you so much. All prayer requests, email us, okay? Make sure you're part of the evening prayer line. In Jesus' mighty name, God bless you. Have a blessed day. Goodbye. Hey, Kalalabasia. Thank you, Sister Bouncer. God bless you. Bye-bye. some interference okay because um it's been raining a little bit outside so it took me time to come on okay so just in case it freezes or it acts funny just know that it's because it's raining outside here in Ghana okay in Jesus mighty name we bless the name of the Lord good morning to every single soul every single vessel our God is good we, 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 we are grateful to God for waking us up to see another day. We're thankful to God for all that he's doing in our lives. Uh, God bless you, man of God. I think you believe that, you, I, 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 I think you said that your, um, your son is coming out from prison this morning. We pray for his upkeep and his well-being. In Jesus' mighty name, we, we are grateful to God for all that he, for all that he does for us, okay? We want to uh, this morning just be grateful and be thankful you know god is with us we pray that when your son comes out he'll turn his life completely around give over his life to christ the prison is not his home okay we we are we are praying that we will remember we will remember those who have lost their way this morning not only those who have lost their way, we have a whole bunch of people suffering. You know, when you look at what's happening in Houston, you know, when you look at what's happening around the rest of the world, you understand? There's so much going on. There's so much happening. And there is a need for Christ to step in. You know, you have, you know, uh, uh, there's a, there was a mass slide which happened in Sierra Leone, not fully developed. People died, you know. Uh, flooding and you know mud and it just you know people were sleeping and you know they just they were taken out and then you look at you know what is called the most developed world you know have all the infrastructure have all the technology and the mechanisms you know this wasn't something that just crept up on Houston surprisingly you know it, it we, we knew it was coming and all and all the necessary all the necessary preparations were made are you following me all the necessary preparations were made but guess what guess what it still hasn't been able to prevent what is happening from happening but in the midst of everything that is taking place we the people of god need to be calm we the people of god need to be in prayer we the people of god need to be silent and be in prayer let's pray more and talk less let's pray more and talk less yes lord let's pray more and talk less my god you know when you see social media light up hold your tongue and pray am i making sense this morning yes lord when you see social media just turn yourself just find yourself a wall and begin to begin to talk it is designed to be that way you know social media it is designed to be that way it feeds off okay 
these kind of conversations, unfounded allegations, whether it is true or it is not. That is what it feeds off. And the desire of the enemy is to take us off focus. Let's pray more and talk less. Let's pray more and talk less. It's the car we're praying for you. Let's pray more and talk less. Let's talk to our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. My God. God is in total control if we submit to him. Okay? And, and let's submit to God this morning. Let's submit to his will this morning. Let's submit. And listen, the, uh, you know, uh, all of us, okay, if you can, I don't know, find, you know, uh, a place where if you can donate something, don't think that anything is too small. Okay, if you can donate something, you know, if you can send money to an organization that you know is helping out with these kind of things, this is the perfect opportunity to show the love of Christ. Remember, you remember I posted yesterday, you know, after he'd finished preaching, he fed them. I'm not talking about, you know, spiritual food. I'm talking about physical food, natural food. You know, every now and again, well, not every now and again, you need to eat. You need to look after your body. And there are some people who are lacking the ability to, to eat and to feed themselves. So if you are in a position to help, don't look down on them. Don't talk about them. Okay? At this moment in time, what they need is our support. What they need is a fresh word from God. The Lord has me on this word and I'm studying it. He said, the word of the Lord is sharper than any two-edged sword. The word of the the word of the Lord, it cuts. It goes through. It, 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 it is sharper. He has me studying that word. I woke up early this morning and it's been in my spirit. And it was so amazing that yesterday, last night, after we finished praying, you know, just scrolling through social media and I, you know, I normally wouldn't watch. But I saw a young man preaching and the first thing I heard him say, <laughs> first thing I heard him say, was well, the word of the Lord is sharper than any two edged sword. I know it will freeze. It's going to freeze because the weather is getting bad here, okay? So if it messes up, you know what to do. Okay, just go into that place of prayer, okay? In the name of Jesus. Father, I feel power this morning. Be so tobo siya. Ha, I feel power this morning. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power and there is healing. Somebody is somebody is in a shelter, has lost every material thing. Every material possession is now flooded. Every electrical appliance is now flooded. And now they are wondering. How they're going to make it through this season. 2017 is looking to turn out to be the worst year of their life. Looks like 2017 is turning out to be the worst year of their life. Somebody is going to contemplate suicide. Somebody is going to contemplate getting rid or, you know, just, 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 just leaving this life because they don't see how it is possible to recover from this place. But listen to me, if we can just release a word of the Bible, says, the word of the Lord, it is sharper than any two edged sword. The word of the Lord, it is sharper than any two edged sword. The word of the Lord, it is sharper than any two edged sword. 